Chinook salmon are the largest of any of the salmon in Oregon. Mature fish range from less than two pounds to more than 70 pounds. In the late 1800s, Chinook salmon were almost the only species taken for canning in the Columbia River, with production peaking at 43 million pounds in 1883. 43 million pounds of Chinook salmon were taken from the Columbia River in 1883, and they were put in tin cans. By the 1880s, Chinook salmon population declines were already a cause of concern. In 1880, Chinook salmon population was already a cause of concern. What have we done since 1880? Historically, the range of the Chinook salmon included all coastal streams below natural barriers. On the coast, in 1900, there were approximately 500,000 Chinook salmon. Today, this number has declined by 30% to 50%. Efforts to restore salmon must focus on improving the fish habitat in the watersheds where it lives. At the same time, we must address other factors of its decline, such as harvest and hatchery effects on the species. Coastal residents have a critical role to play in improving fish habitat in watersheds. Improving watersheds will help prevent the extinction of species and provide the benefits to individuals and communities in the form of enhanced water quality and quantity. What makes a Chinook salmon a Chinook salmon? People have long distinguished Chinook salmon by the timing of the adult migration. Fall, spring, and even summer Chinook are known to return to Oregon waters. At least a few adult fish probably enter some Oregon rivers every month of the year. Like other salmon, Chinook juveniles migrate from fresh water to the ocean and then return to fresh water as adults to spawn and die. However, Chinook differ from other salmon in many different tactics. Termed life history strategies, they employ for carrying out this life cycle. Scientists distinguish two major forms of Chinook salmon, a stream type that as juveniles spend over a year in fresh water before migrating to the ocean, spring or summer Chinook, and an ocean type that migrates to the ocean within months of hatching, fall Chinook. They laid Preacher Casey on the ground, poor Casey. They laid Preacher Casey on the ground. Tom Jode, he the upriver salmon migration is one of club. nature's most exciting Hitting dramas. But to the five species Tom of Pacific Joe salmon, Chinook, Chum, Choho, Pink, and, and Sockeye, it is a long, strenuous, desperate race against time, with every obstacle taking its toll. Tom run back where his mother was asleep. He woke her up out of bed. Pacific salmon belong to a group called Andromedus fish that, that include Atlantic salmon, sturgeon, lampreys, shad, herring, sea run cutthroat, trout, and steelhead trout. These species hatch and live the first part of their lives in fresh water, then migrate to the ocean to spend their adult lives, which may be as short as six months or as long as seven years. When they reach sexual maturity, they return to the freshwater stream of their origin to lay their eggs. Pacific salmon make this round trip only once but some Atlantic salmon may repeat the cycle several times. Migration between fresh and salt water occurs every season of the year, depending on latitude and genetic characteristics of the fish. Groups of fish that migrate together are called runs or stocks. Salmon spawn in virtually all types of freshwater habitat. 
From intertidal areas to high mountain streams, Pacific salmon may swim hundreds, even thousands of miles to get back to the stream where they were hatched. They'll send you to New Bedford Town, that famous whaling port, and hand you to some land sharks there to board and pitch you out singing. However, only a small and live to reach their natural stream or spawning grounds. Those males that survive the trip are often gaunt with grotesquely humped backs, hook jaws, and battle-torn fins. The females are swollen with a pound or more of eggs. Both have large white patches of bruised skin on their backs and sides. It's now we're out to sea, my boys, the wind comes on to blow. One half the watch is sick on deck, the other half below sing it. Since salmon do not feed once they leave the ocean, some will die in the way because they lack enough stored fat to make the trip. Many will be caught in fishermen nets. Those that evade the nets may have to swim through polluted waters in their cities. Many must make their way over power dams, leaping up from one tiny pool to the next 